it's been a while I haven't uploaded any video so today I am back uh, in front of you and today I'll be explaining about one of the Redwood component uh, that is in-app navigation so in-app navigation basically helps you to navigate between different pages and flows uh, so I've opened the uh, component uh, in-app navigation on my screen which gives information about the description the properties and uh, the description says that it displays multiple destinations at the bottom of the screen so basically at the bottom section like this you will have different navigation items and uh, it expects the data to be uh, ADP and the structure should be like ID, label, icon, batch these all things you can uh, assign to that list so today in our demo we'll see uh, how we can uh, add this component into our web application and how we can use them to navigate to different parts so uh, I this is my web application I have four different flows here and the flows have pages inside so now we need to add the in-app navigation so uh, first you understand we want this in-app navigation to be present in all the pages so we have to add it on the shell page because whatever things which we add on the shell page or whatever code which is present on the shell page is available across your application so uh, we'll go to the root page and then to the shell once it is loaded we will uh, call our component in app navigation so it is a new component a redwood component so it will be available in all your applications which uses the redwood starter app okay now let us search the in app navigation okay now let us just drag and drop it you basically drag and drop it after the whatever code is present on your uh, shell just do it after that okay so now we have assigned the component uh, sorry we have uh, added the component okay so now uh, you remember it told us that in the component in, in the component uh, documentation there is that it expects value to be like ID label icon and batch where ID label icon and string and batch values number so now let us go and add a type so that we can use this type for a variable and we'll assign that variable to our navigation so now go to type Def select custom give it uh, as navigation type okay now create and in this we need to add the fields so we'll add ID we'll add icon we'll add label and we'll add badge value and that will be number so now we have defined our type now let us first go and define a variable and uh, let it be an array okay nav array give it a name and now just create your array okay and now let us create an ADP variable which we will assign to our in-app navigation component and which would be of her type which we just defined so let me give it as a name as nav ADP okay now here select array data provider create now come to type here uh, select your type and your key attribute select ID okay so now we have done this now come to page designer in our 
in app now add the data as nav array adp selected item would be or let it be we don't need it as of now uh, so we have added the data okay so now our next step is okay we have added the data but let us check are we able to see our navigation list so our navigation list is added but we are not able to see anything to it that is because we don't have assigned any uh, value to our ADP yet okay so to do that what we will do is we'll assign a default value to this array okay so now let me prepare that so for that we'll add it as ID so our ID will be flow one then we'll have icon for it and then we will have uh, your label so label is what will be visible to us okay so I'll give it as flow one okay icon let us give this so these are the icons which are available you can add any icon you want so now as we have four flows let us add four items here now let us copy this okay so flow one flow two flow three flow four now let us add badge value also for one of it okay you remember what it was number so let me give a number and let us give it as flow two flow three flow four and let us add different icons also So now we have uh, created an array. Okay, now just copy it, go to the application, and in this, in default value, just pass this. It says invalid JSON. Okay, I have missed one thing. So we have not added this. Curly braces was missed, so again copy it, provide it in your okay. So now we have added. So now our next step is to assign this value to our ADP variable, then only it will be visible. So for that, let us create an event, go to event listener and on page load, like on VB enter. We want this value to be assigned so now let us page action assign nav values okay now finish and here go to action chain okay now just to the assignment okay now here if you come we just need to assign our 
uh, okay array to uh, this data okay now this is done now let us run a page and see whether we are able to see the navigation items in bottom or not so as you can see I have the navigation items on our uh, page like on our application we are able to see it but still this is not working uh, for that I'll we have so uh, till now we have seen uh, how we can add the navigation items okay uh, let me refresh it so we can see all the four items which we added and we also see the batch value for one of it okay so now but one thing uh, by default it goes to my first flow but the first flow is not selected okay we are not able to see any selection on it so for that just click on your in-app navigation component go to data and here if you see there's something called selected item so let us create a variable for it okay so let us give it a name as selected ID okay keep it as a string click on create and now on our action chain okay where we are assigning the ADP here let us also assign the current system flow value okay so whatever would be selected on the screen that would be highlighted now let us click on save and execute and see our page let it load now see the flow one is selected okay now when you navigate the different flows will be selected but as of now we have not added the navigation uh, thing here so for that it's very simple now go to your page designer and in events on in-app navigation click on create new event and on this create on SP selection action okay and now we just need to add our navigation so add a navigate and here now coming back to the page designer I'll show you the something on the action chain so when you see it selected the current ID so current ID is passed into the action chain as well as previous ID like when you navigate the previous ID is also passed so now in the action chain in the navigate here let us uh, here navigate and then page shell now here we would we would want to pass our selected values okay so that is the ID of our ADP which is stored where in the current value so for that let us try adding that okay current ID now let us execute and see whether it's working So now uh, let us click on flow 2 and check whether we are navigating uh, to our flow 2 page or not. Seems it's not navigating. Uh, so what we have added. Okay, now here I, we have missed one thing. So we have added the current ID, but we should add like it's a variable. No? So we should add it as. Uh, variables dot current ID okay I've missed that now let us execute and see now let us click on flow 2 and we are navigated to flow 2 
let us click on flow 3 and we are navigated to flow 3 flow 4 we are navigated to flow 4 and when you click on flow 1 so we are navigated back to flow 1 uh, so uh, other uh, one thing which I forgot to mention about the in-app navigation is as it is a part of the Redwood component so it take care of the uh, sizing of the components when the page size changes also uh, one of the limitation here is the number of components that could be added to it is uh, 8 so maximum components that could be added to in-app navigation flow is 8 and so I'll done with the uh, demo today so I'll request you all to please uh, support us subscribe our channel like the video share it to your friends and stay connected thank you channel